Hello everyone, this is Ron from High Tech Legion and this is an Asus F1A 75M Pro motherboard. It supports the latest AMD A series processors, such as the A8 and A6 processors, and it is outfitted with AMD's A75 Hudson D3 chipset. Now, since it's using the A series processors, it actually has an FM1 socket. It is different than the AM2 and AM2, rather the AM2 Plus and the AM3 as well as the AM3 Plus processors that we have seen in the 990FX and 890FX boards but the A75 chipset and the A series processors are actually aimed for the mainstream market and uh, the good thing about this new chipset is that not only does it have the same um, SATA 6 native support as the 990FX and 890FX motherboards it adds USB 3.0 functionality and it's natively supported in the chipset but uh, this is an Asus motherboard. You have the Asus exclusive features such as the Vision Plus VRM, UEFI BIOS, TPU, and EPU. And now let's uh, flip the box back. You can see some more features. I have actually have a list here of specifications. Uh, the memory supports up to 64 gigabytes. That is a lot for a four DIMM slots. And actually, you can support you can have um, 16 gigabytes per slot. And natively supported is 1866 MHz of BDR3. And as for USB 3.0, you can see something unique is that uh, this one has four USB 3.0 slots in the back and two more from the front header. Now the native A75 chipset actually supports only up to four. That means Asus has added a another USB 3.0 controller to add a, two more USB 3.0 um, ports in the rear. As for uh, on the right side of the box, you can see a quick explanation of what the TPU and EPUs are, as well as the DG Plus VRM on the top, and the auto tuning function. Now, the auto tuning function is for an automatic overclock you can access on the UEFI BIOS in here. The UEFI BIOS is a better graphical interface compared to the old clunky BIOS of old, which is the black or white or black and blue, or the white and blue, as you were uh, you probably see, seen in old computers if you have an old system. And this one not only adds uh, support for booting into hard drives that are larger than 2.2 terabytes, it's much more efficient and easier to navigate since you can actually use your mouse. And everything is a is basically a graphical interface rather than just pure text. As for the TPU, it is basically it's uh, responsible for precise voltage control, and EPU is responsible for energy efficiency. These are two processors that are included in the uh, motherboard itself on board to help with the when you're overclocking or just running your system uh, to be a much better system than a regular A75 motherboard. Now let's actually open up this box and see what the F1 A75 M Pro motherboard looks like and what accessories come with this package. Flipping open the box from the front, quick view. Uh, there's actually a compartment here. Let's just pull that out and uh, underneath is the motherboard cradled inside. inside a, anti-static covering. Let's just put that aside and uh, take a look at some of the accessories. In here you can find a pair of SATA 6 cables and have your rear I.O. plate. If you look closely they are labeled actually cut into the uh, back plate itself and here in the back you have a foil covering and it is actually padded. You have the driver CD, or the driver DVD, and you also have a sticker there. So power bases you can put in your into your case, and the documentation is a user guide. Uh, let's see if it's whether it's multi-language or it's actually all English, and uh, it's quite thick. But, uh, it's a very detailed manual. Rest of the box is empty. Let's uh, move the accessories aside and take a look at. The motherboard itself. Slowly pull it out. Anti static packaging. Now we have the Asus F1A75M Pro out of the box. We can clearly see it is a micro ATX foam factor. It's 9.6 inches in length and width. And uh, let's actually take a closer look on the FM1 socket. If you haven't seen it before, it's slightly different than the AM3 Plus socket. Uh, it's 
same idea when you're installing something it basically you can just lift this latch right here put in your processor and make sure to align the diamond rather the triangle on the upper left hand corner with the one found in your processor and lock it in place now to install a heatsink this actually looks slightly different if you haven't seen the 990fx motherboards or 990x motherboards this the, the what the difference is with the fm1 socket and 90fx compared to the am3 or am2 plus uh, motherboard uh, rather the heatsink mounting mechanism is that the sides are actually open the mounting holes are the same so you can reuse those heat sinks so you don't have to spend a lot of money to buy a new uh, heat sink or using maximum heat sink back place for that especially if you have water cooling you can just reuse it and but the good thing about not having a, a, uh, the sides locked is that you, when you have a top mounted uh, heat sink a, right, a heat sink with a down blow, downward blowing fan it will blow into the components that are it can actually help with the cooling it so uh, Let's actually look at the CPU mounting area. And right here in the top, you have four pin fan for CPU. And uh, you can see if you're closer, you have the EPU microprocessor right there, right beside the eight pin EPS 12 volt power connector. Now the good thing about having a full eight pin there compared to the lighter version of this motherboard, which is the F1A75M and the F1A75LE, which only have four pin, is that this, even though it is a micro ATX form factor motherboard, will overclock very well. So you have your four plus two VRM, Digi plus VRM, and yeah, four DIMM slots, which can support it with 64 gigabytes, 16 gigabyte module each, and your three, and uh, here on the side, Usually you can find these at the bottom, but this is a micro ASUS form factor. What uh, ASUS did was put the EPU, TPU, and memo K. Either the memo K is always beside the DIMM slots, but the EPU and TPU switch, on and off switch, are actually found now here on the right side. You also have the 24 pin ATX power connector there, and as well as another 4 pin fan connector. Here you have, uh, you can see a power LED on board, and 6. SATA 6 G SATA ports, which are 90 degree angled, convenience, and your front panel connectors. Now the SATA 6 is natively uh, natively supported by the uh, Hudson D3 A75 chipset found underneath this heatsink. It's a small heatsink. It doesn't require too much uh, cooling because if you remember that we this is the FM1 socket which supports the APUs. The A series APUs have the graphics and the Northridge onboard chip on the package itself, CPU package itself. So you don't need extra cooling. The chip is rather simple in this motherboard. And uh, you can see the, you can see here you have a USB 3.0 header and four USB 2.0 headers right there, as well as a COM1 port and a front panel audio. Now, the maximum, I think, is 10 USB 2.0 supported by the D3 chipset, AMD A75 chipset. So, Asus really maximized that you have 8 on board and 2 at the back for a maximum of 10. As for the expansion slots on the Asus F1A75M Pro motherboard, you can find a full-size uh, PCIe X16 slot in blue. Right underneath that is a PCIe X1. And the light blue slot is a PCI slot for your legacy device, like your uh, sound card. And the black one underneath is a PCIe X16 physically, but it's only electrically linked to X4. Means when you're running a crossfire, you can run at 16x and X4 when both of these are populated. At the back of the Asus F1A75M Pro Micro ATX motherboard, you can find a PS2 connector for your keyboard and mouse. You have a pair of USB 3.0 ports, which are actually connected to the AS Media USB 3.0 controller. You have your optical audio connector, as well as an HDMI connector right below it. You have a D-Sub and a DVI display connectors. You have two more USB 3.0, which are controlled by the uh, A75 chipset. You have a pair of USB 2.0 ports and your RJ45 Ethernet port. You also have your six audio jacks 